Hello, this is Frederik Steinmetz for cgtutsplus.com and this is the second part of my fish swarm tutorial and today we're going to continue just where we left off and that is after we produce the swarm with the void particles and we're now going to have a look at these wiggling fish and how to set up their materials for a cycles render. In the end, we're going to have a look at a uh, node setup, and you can see over here that I have composited a blender render on top of a cycles render, and this way I can take advantage of all the blender passes, like the speed, the mist, the Z pass, and include this in the cycles render, so the fish get rendered with the blender render, and their speed vectors get created in the blender render, and then we can use them to use a motion blur on top of the cycles render. So it's a very exciting tutorial, and let's just have a look at how this works. Okay, and let's uh, just get this to be the rendered view. I should turn on cycles, and also we need a light. I'll just add a sun. Lamp, sun. Okay, something like this should be fine, and let's add a new material. It already has a material, so just press Use Nodes, and that, of course, changes the settings for all the fish. And let's uh, change the viewport color of the fish to be slightly blue, so we can distinguish them. And uh, on the material, I already pressed Use Nodes, so they're nodes. The fish already has a texture, so Shift-A. Texture, image texture, and you can now choose mackerel.png and use it as the color input. If I change this to rendered view, you can see it's already uh, it's already using the texture. And uh, this time, let's use the subsurface modifier so our fish get a little better. I had the wrong fish selected, so uh, that's why it didn't improve. So uh, here, here we go. Now, if we switch to rendered and increase this even more, we can see that our fish is now looking a lot more like a fish. Apparently, by default, this texture was set to the right mappings, but uh, just to be sure, let's set this to UV. And you can, of course, insert this manually, but I think it's faster to just choose UV over here. It doesn't make any difference, so I guess it was already at UV. Now, you can see that Blender, again, treats alpha like black. So, we can go in and um, just paint on this fish. So, if I press N, I can bring up my color picker. It's white, okay? Let's just uh, paint down here. Okay, now the belly of the fish is white. And there's something weird going on. I have this a bunch of times. If I change into textured view, my fish get really, really long. But that was usually fixed if I pressed uh, frame forward. Okay, so now we have our fish with a white belly, and that is important. Save this as mackerel.1. Even though this uh, file is now called mackerel.1.png, the name it has inside Blender is does not have the one. You can see you can inside Blender you can rename this as you like. And now our fish have a white belly. If you want it to be totally realistic, you would make the white belly glossy, but um, that is uh, exaggeration for a swarm this big. So let's actually just uh, keep these settings and go in and make a test render. I'll look through the camera and bring the camera a lot closer. Okay, so this should give, uh, give us an overview on how the swarm would look like. And we have one problem, and that is our emitter is being rendered. And that is because the halo uh, material in doesn't exist in cycles, and that wh is why this is rendered. We can just go into the particle settings and uncheck emitter. This is usually a good idea anyways. And now you can see our fish are starting to work. And uh, we can now increase the number of fish. Where is that? Under display and set this up to 100 again. And now you can see our swarm appearing. And this is uh, 
taking a lot longer now, of course. So let's switch this to GPU and that should really speed up the process. Okay, this is starting to look pretty nice now. We have our swarm. Let's uh, get the environment to be a lot more sea-like. So something like this. In the end, I uh, rendered this with a transparent background for compositing. So that's, let's set this up as well over here. It's under film. Now you're, and now you can see uh, from further away, we'll have a pretty decent swarm already. There you go, and with uh, four samples, it's still noisy, but you can definitely distinguish the fish. And after seven seconds, we have rendered our entire 20,000 fish swarm. The one I produced in the end even had 40,000 fish. And um, that still was no problem to render. And you can see over here right now Cycles is actually faster than the viewport. And uh, I really like this option. So uh, now we are actually ready to get into compositing. Okay, this uh, swarm is starting to look pretty good. You can see the individual fish. But there is... Um, some there are some problems or not problems with some things I want to do that are not possible in cycles yet or at all and that is I want to make uh, the fish seem a little blurry like motion blur that is not supported in cycles yet and also I want some volumetric lighting going on and there will probably be a support for that there is one in Lux but it takes a long time to render. So if I can fake it, why not fake it? First, let me uh, take down the display again, because if I switch out of rendered mode, my computer will get very slow. Okay, of course, the easiest way to fake the volumetric lights is the halo lights in Blender, which are the spotlights that can create a halo. But we are in cycles render mode, and we do want the swarm to be rendered in cycles. So the easiest solution for that is to composite the actual rendering from the Blender internal on top of the cycles. We could, of course, create an image sequence with cycles and re-import this back into our compositor, but there is a much easier and quicker way. I'm going to create a new scene and say link object, and that makes my object centers here turn blue. And uh, if the center is blue and not orange, that indicates this object is linked. So whatever I do to this object in the cycle scene, that in the Blender scene, that I just named Blender, will be changed in the cycles scene as well. So be aware of that. And uh, so let's just create those two light, uh, this halo light that I was talking about. If you switch scenes with the control arrow, or using this, every view here has a default scene, or not a default scene, but the scene you assign to it stays with the view. That means every time you press control left or right arrow, you have to make sure that you're in the right scene. So this is Blender, and I'll change this to Blender Render. And uh, that means that I can now insert a lamp, spot lamp, that casts a halo. I don't need specular, I don't need diffuse, all I need is the halo. And that is if you check mark halo and set the steps at least to two, otherwise you won't see any shadows. I set it to three. And since the sun is very big and very far away, the rays of the sun appear like they are parallel. And this is now 45 degrees cone. That is too big. So I'll decrease the size of the cone. And then I'll add a plane. And in top view, you can see the plane is, of course, directly underneath the light because I didn't move the 3D cursor. And I'm going to subdivide this quite a few times. 10 is the maximum, but I want one more still. There it is. Now let's change into face select and press space and type in random. Select random and you can now change the number of faces selected. I'm going to go with something like this and press X and only faces. Now I have punched some holes in this. But well, I guess we can put a few more holes in there. So something like this. 
until you're happy. And now, parent this to the lamp. So shift select the lamp and press Control P. We can see now it's uh, fairly big. So move it down until it fills the cone. And now uh, go to frame 1, insert a rotation keyframe, and go to frame 10 and press R, Z, and let's say 5 degrees. Press I and insert another location keyframe. And now delete the X and Y channels. That was too much. You have to be uh, over here with your mouse if you want to delete a single channel. And now press T, uh, Shift E and say linear extrapolation and that will make the plane rotate infinitely. Now since the plane is rotating on its z-axis if I now um, move the camera the plane will still rotate around its local z-axis which is great because we want the light of the halo to cast or to fall only through the holes in the plane because that will fake those nice volumetric shadows. And let's have a look where my camera is, over there. So I rotate my lamp, so it's pointing towards the camera. And this is supposed to point somewhat over the swarm. Now I'll press Alt-D for both of them, which will duplicate the object and this lamp, giving the lamp the same material as this lamp. You can see spot 004, spot 004. Now the two lamps, if I change anything with the one lamp, both lamps will change, which is exactly what I want. Actually we can decrease the cone to like 15%, so it seems more parallel. And one cone is supposed to shine over the swarm, and one cone is supposed, uh, one spot is supposed to shine through the swarm. Okay, now if we were to render this, that would take a pretty long time because all our particles need to be rendered without instance rendering. So there is an easy fix because we don't want the particles to be visible in the Blender internal engine anyways. We want them to be visible only from the cycles rendering. So what I'm going to do is create a dummy. I'm just create a dummy. It doesn't matter what it's called. Just... Uh, as long as it holds a material. And this material will be shadeless black. Pitch black, nothing but black. I'll call this shadeless. Okay, let's move the dummy out of the way. Doesn't matter where you put it. It's just so I can create the material. It's all good. So, since I don't want the particles to be visible, I'm going to put an override material. This is going to be my shadeless material. And this means every mesh in the scene will be rendered with this material. No matter what this material was assigned to it before. So I don't have to change the material of the swarm to black because that would recursively influence my cycle scene. So all I need to do is set the material to shadeless. Okay, this is great, because we can now composite the blender scene on top of the cycle scene by using an add node. Okay, let's go back to cycles, go back into the compositor. Okay, now these are our render settings, and uh, if I want to get some motion blur in this, and that's right, we can get motion blur into a cycles render by using the vector blur from the blender end. And that of course does not work very well with a out of focus background. Since we don't have that, it works fairly well. So we need to turn on vector in order to uh, calculate the speed vector of the particles. But another thing I want to turn on is the mist pass. And you can see both those paths, passes are appearing here and we can use them as nodes. But first we'll have to configure the mist pass. And if you click on your camera and then go to the camera settings, you can toggle the display for mist and limits. Let's check off limits because we're not using a focus. But let's keep on mist. And you can see if I toggle this off, you'll see the starting point of the mist and the end point of the mist. And right now they're already configured for my scene. But in order to change them, you'll have to go to the world settings, enable mist, and then you can change these settings. And in 2.5 and upwards, you have a starting point of the mist, which I'll 
choose to be just my beginning of the swarm, and you'll have a depth. This is where the mist ends. Everything behind this point will be covered in mist. So let's make this depth around here. So we have a from full white to full black spectrum, almost, and we can go in with curves in order to adjust this later, because right now we don't have a really good preview. You don't need to keep the mist checked in order to render a mist pass, which is great, because otherwise our particles would disappear in the mist. And let's get back to the compositor. So, uh, let's render this. Okay, our volume metrics here are very strong. We can of course change that later on, and we can see the fish are black, and if I switch this to alpha, you can see the entire swarm got rendered, but it's black, which is exactly what we want. And you can see those got rendered as well, and they are a bit distracting. So what I'll do is I'll move my lamps out of the way so we don't see them anymore. And uh, I'm going to split my view here, put this to camera, and this T and N, and move them out of the way. Okay, and this one was too strong anyways. We don't need to turn down the intensity because we can always do that in the mix now. And we could now go ahead and composite this on top of the cycles render. I first thought I need to create an entire cycle sequence and then re-import that in order to be able to composite the BI settings on the cycles. But you don't have to. And this is why we create this created the scenes. So I can now go to input render layers. I can select the cycle scene. And this means that Blender will render both the Blender internal and the cycles at the same time, or actually with the same key pressed, I should better, I should say. And then it will, uh, we will be able to composite the rendered image without saving anything and re-importing it. While compositing over Blender over cycles, I experienced a lot of bugs. So if your computer or your Blender version is not behaving the way it should be, then uh, switch back to an earlier version. That's what I did. So we'll continue in this version and let's uh, create a couple of nodes. So color mix node because we want the blender to be added to the cycles. So uh, the upper one is the blender, the lower one is the cycles. And that is wrong. So let's just switch those. We need the blender in the lower slot and the cycles version in the upper slot, and we'll set this to add. And uh, let's give this a test render. So now it's rendered, and it took about two minutes, and this is already the composited result. And in order to uh, distinguish between the two, I'll insert a viewer node. It's output viewer, and I'll uh, shift control click on this one in order to uh, present this. And uh, if your uh, image is too big for the screen, you can press V and then shrink it down. So, but of course, it's a good idea to, uh, if for test renders, to shrink the actual render size. And you can do that down here. So, let's make this 50. Okay, I press Control, up arrow in order to uh, make this very big. We don't have a missed pass. I'm sorry, I picked, of course, Cycles does not render a missed pass. Okay, there we go. This is our mist pass, and we're going to use this for the compositing, because on the water, of course, you have a limited visibility, so your image will look a lot nicer if these fish here that are further away from the camera start to fade out. So let's do that. For that, I'm going to create a color alpha over node. And right now, we don't have any background. We'll take care of that later. So what we'll do is we'll create a foreground. Uh, I mean, we create just a background color, something like that. We could also use a blend, but we're going to make one later. We're going to use the misc as the factor. The actual swarm over here, this is what we need to composite on top of our color. Let's see if I switch those. Yeah, that was correct. Okay, you can see now that those fish are starting to fade in the background a little. If I now add a filter vector blur. I can put this behind the alpha over because then it will affect only the, uh, the result of the alpha node. If I were to put this in front of the alpha node, then this would first be blurred and then the mist pass would be used as a mask. 
And that would mean that the unblurred mist mask should mask out a blurred fish swarm. And that would not work well. We would see artifacts at the edges. So make sure that the vector blur is behind the alpha over node and connect the speed to the speed and the z to the z. Okay, then let's preview this. There we go. Now our fish have motion blur. If I press M here and mute this, you can clearly see the difference. I want to increase the effect of the uh, mist pass, so I'll insert a color RGB curves. Let's find the right one. It's down here. And uh, for testing purposes, I'd recommend you to mute the vector blur because it's uh, actually quite heavy to render. Since I dragged the RGB curves into a line that has a black dot, that means it's a, a black and white map or some other form of black and white information, Blender automatically co connected that to the factor value of the RGB curves and it needs to be in the image value. And now if I move my curves, you can see my fish swarm is getting uh, a little bit transparent in the background. Okay, so here is my add node. And I need to connect the blurred image from the cycles to the add node in order to get those light streaks. And here we can see them. They're Actually, they're not too bad. Let's uh, still make them a little more subtle. And we can do that by dragging a curve node in between and just uh, decreasing the brightness. And right now they're being composited on top of a violet background or sort of violet looking background. So we can increase the red a little and the green just a bit so to make them more yellow or orangey. Okay, that looks good for our swarm. Let's turn back the motion blur. And this is our image. Uh, let me just uh, quickly show you how I made the background. I have very many layers here. Let's just delete this one. Just shift A mesh plane and then go to camera view, press F6 and check align to view. And that will make the plane parallel to the camera, which is perfect for what I'm trying to do. And we can now give this, since we're in the blender section, or scene, we can give this a blender material. And be sure to check shadeless. And I'm going to add two textures. One is a blend because apparently uh, Ocean is darker at the bottom than it is at the top. And let's create some colors for this. Let's make the top a Turkish or turquoise. I have no idea how to pronounce that in English. I'm sorry. Okay, and also increase the alpha of the deep blue. And maybe make this to ease. Okay. This is just a rough estimate. Let's just call this blend. And also call this one clouds. You can either, either use clouds and get the depth down and the size up. You can actually show both materials. Multiply. And also we need to check RAM. Because otherwise it will try to multiply these pink values. And um, let's not use black because black multiplied is actually pitch black. And now you can see this is actually pretty much exaggerating. So there we go. This is much better. So I think this is a little greenish. And still darker. Okay, that should do uh, as the background. You can also use Musgrave or you can uh, increase the depth a little and therefore the scale. It's up to you. Just uh, pick some colors that you like and think are suitable for an ocean scene. Okay, now you, um, this layer here is, if I were to just render this layer, then um, of course all the other stuff would not get rendered. And if I would turn on the first layer on which everything is, then uh, the plane would be in the background. And if I composite this on top, 
using the add node, then the uh, plane here would also play a role in the add node and would get added to this form. It's not what we want. So we'll set up render layers and uh, just click on plus swarm and the other one is background and the swarm should render everything except for layer 4 and the oh, the background should re render layer 4 and the swarm everything else one was already unchecked not sure why but just leave it unchecked just to be certain to be on the safe side and now I can create a new input render layers it'll automatically be on the blender scene because this is the active scene and we'll check background and this background should be replace the alpha over color and now since there is no information coming from this layer our viewer node turned black and uh, we can actually just render this layer so we don't have to go over the other renders as layers as well and it's white and that is because I unchecked everything except shadows and it's not rendering our texture and careful uh, these settings down here they count for all the layers uh, so all the layers set so you can't turn off textures here and keep them turned on in the background I uh, actually made this mistake and had to start over quite a few times and also you can't you can see you can't uncheck your vector I mean it's uh, it's unchecked but it's still calculating the vectors okay now you can see we have an image let's see why this is still black it's probably because yeah it's because this layer here has no movement therefore it has no vectors and this uh, makes the speed vector node turn everything black we'd have to re-render this layer as well in order to get the speed vector to work as you could see I had some problems with re-rendering single layers so I um, had to start over some of it so this is basically the same node setup the only thing I changed is the camera angle and um, I'm just going to show you how the final how I made the final animation and also if I start doing this you'll see why I used a plane with a texture instead of um, a still image as a background I mean I could have just managed that by using a texture as an input and um, put this on top or underneath the actual swarm in the compositor instead of creating a plane and everything thing is if I would have then moved the camera it the background would have stayed in place so even the camera moved the background would not change its uh, position so um, but we don't have that kind of problem since our plane is right here and apparently that was a little close anyway so let's uh, set up the camera the way I did uh, let's change the view and um, we here have the plane let's look through the camera in solid mode to make sure that the, the plane is filling the entire field of view and now you can see here with the camera that um, the mist pass I organized the mist pass so it's just around the swarm and of course in the water the mist or uh, the line of sight the visibility range it does not change simply by moving the camera so I'm not going to worry about what happens if I move the camera alongside the swarm even though the mist pass will change but one important thing is even though the mist pass changes or the mist depth we do not want the plane to get um, blown off in the mist because the plane is basically what happens if you don't see anything anymore so uh, make sure that in the options over here you uncheck use mist and that will um, not influence the plane by the mist pass no matter what you do and this is more of a safety precaution because in theory we have turned off the mist pass but still it's a good idea to check it just in case 
uh, so we don't run into any trouble. And since we are not using a depth of field node, we can safely ignore that the plane is now fairly close to the camera if I move the camera right over here. And since most particles look a lot better from further away than they look when you're really close, because they're low poly and because you can see all the little details in there or all the little failures in their actual movement where the particles don't look exactly like fish, we are going to be close to the swarm and then go away from the swarm. Because if you're zooming or if you're changing an image gradually, you should always end up with the best position. So start with the worst and get to the best. Of course, I'm not saying that this part has a worst uh, scene, but still we're going to start from the beginning, uh, I mean from the close-up. And then what you want to do is press I and set a location and rotation keyframe. So log rod. And then you can see, of course, in the graph editor, we get a we get the representation for that keyframe. And I um, should have gone to frame, not frame one, because we need a frame where the particles are already organized. Something like that looks fine. So let's check what I have over here. Start frame one, that's not good. Let's put that to 27. And let's uh, continue, uh, redo that, location, rotation. And now we have a nice keyframe where the animation should start. And if you want to have this 250 frames, you can go to the end by hitting shift and right arrow. And then move the camera so we can see a little bit better. And since I said the uh, amount displayed over here, um, it's right down here. We have 1% of the fish shown. So that is why we don't see very many of the fish. But in those uh, points here, those are from the halo material that we gave our emitter cube. We can see approximately how high the swarm is. So from here to here. So we can see our camera at, these, at the ending point is way too high. So I'm going to move it down like that by clicking on the camera and pressing G while looking through it. We can move it around. And also let's uh, pretend this swarm is very, very big. I mean, it is, but we want to emphasize that by looking up a little. And what I did, press Shift F, and that sort of turns the camera into a flight simulator. And by um, scrolling the mouse wheel, we can go, you can move back and forth. And by moving the mouse, you can um, sort of look up and down. Okay. So this is a, a position that I kind of like. So I press I and location rotation. So all we need to do now is check the in-between. So right now this actually looks pretty good. But you can see we're about until here. And then we sort of suddenly move up. So that is too sudden for me. And also, I do not want the camera to accelerate while we're moving away. Because that would just uh, make a, make uh, the viewer feel pretty weird that our camera is... I mean, it is natural, but in the real world, a cameraman would have already accelerated the camera before he starts recording. Let's press T and set this to linear. And that means all the location keyframes are linearly in, ex, uh, interpolated and that means there is no acceleration and deceleration and let's have a look at the location uh, the rotation and we don't want those to be linear because let's hide those because they have the same colors so they're kind of in the way and we do not want the rotation to be actually a busy because otherwise we would have some very sudden rotation uh, shiftings and we can see over here that we should probably just uh, to make things a, a little more interesting I'm going to rotate the camera down here just a bit and insert a rotation keyframe only and uh, because all of the channels were selected earlier not just the ones that I had selected here also those became 
linear. So just press T and set them back to Bezier. And that would make the rotation a lot more smooth. Okay, if I press Alt A, I can see that the camera is moving nicely, but also it appears like the fish have not really organized at frame 27. So just uh, quickly fix that, make it 50 to be on the safe side, and if we increase the end frame here, we'd have to rebake because the last 50 frame would not be baked. So I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to show you quickly how to move those keyframes. Of course, we should have them all turned on. And if I select one of them and press K, that will select all the keyframes that are here. That means rotation as well as location, X, Y, Z. And now we can uh, press G and press 23 to get to the 50th frame because if you press G, the default movement is X. And if I press 23 or type in 23, that means I have moved my keyframes 23 frames in X direction. If you just press M and move the mouse, you can see that they uh, are moving in X as well as in Y direction. And you can also see that our picture is updating in real time. So that's great. Now if we now were to press F12, Control F12 or just uh, click on the animation button here, of course we should go back to the cycles scene because this is actually where our node setup is. So if we were to render the, cycle, the Blender scene, then our cycles part would not get rendered because in the Blender scene there are no, there is no node setup. So Blender does not see a reason why it should render the other scene as well because there is no input coming from that scene. So I hope you learned something. I was very happy to find out that you can composite cycles over Blender without having to start a new image sequence which is great in case you want to um, convert some options while you're rendering and then you don't have to switch back to your other blend file and re-render. And if you like this tutorial, I'd like you to check out our webpage. It's uh, blenderdiplom.com and you'll find a lot of different tutorials there from Smoke VFX over modeling and rendering tutorials. So please give us a visit. Thank you. And until next time, goodbye.